Hey everyone, I promise to you the thumbnail and title of this video is not clickbait. I really do mean it. I'm more excited about astronomy right now than I have been in years and I've set up a bunch of demonstrations on the screen right here to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, just a few hours ago, a good friend of mine, Joachim Fjeldley, put me onto a video that Adam Block had just released, a really fantastic comprehensive video going into the new release from Russell Croman of Blur Exterminator. To cut a long story short, I watched Adam's video and threw my money at the screen. I was sold completely, and I mean literally went straight away and bought it. I clicked Adam's link, bought the product. Downloaded it for myself, decided, right, let's try this thing out. There is a free trial available, by the way, but I just thought I've got all Russell Croman's other tools. I trust them. I think they're great, and if Adam Block thinks it's a good tool, who the hell am I to disagree? So <laughs> basically, here we are. I've bought it, and I couldn't be happier. I'm going to be using this tool in every image going forwards, I promise you. And uh, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, so I made a video. Let's get going. So as you can see, I've got some one-shot color data on the left. This was taken with my RASA 8 and an NBZ dual narrowband filter. And on the right, I've got some plain HA data taken from my Esprit 120. Uh, they're both on the Tulip Nebula and I've ran the tool. So this is Blur Exterminator. I've just got it open right here. And for every single one of these demonstrations, I did the absolute most basic application. Literally just open the tool, drag and drop. I didn't fiddle with anything. I thought I'd show it in its most raw form. This is a good, honest depiction of the tool that way. Now, let's zoom in and start taking you around the image. So if I just do an undo, you can see what the image looked like before. It still looks good, but everything is, admittedly, quite blurry. And if I just right click and redo, look at the difference on those stars. And even better than that, if I just go back and forth a few times, you can see that difference is, it's wild. Hats off to Russ Croman. This I don't know how he's doing this, but whatever he's doing, please keep doing it because these are gifts to the astronomy world. Even better than that anyway, the nebula itself, it's all being perfectly deconvolved. I mean, deconvolution is a task that's at best laborious, I would say. And <laughs> sometimes that, yeah, just, just hair pullingly frustrating. Uh, a lot of the times I just skip it, to be quite honest with you. I'm too lazy for that kind of thing. But look at the difference. All this kind of blurred detail in the base image is now finely resolved filamentary detail. I don't know if this is coming through well for you guys on YouTube or not, but I'll just trust that it is and just keep showing you back and forth, as you can see. This kind of segment of, I don't know if it's a bow shock or something like that around this star, goes from being blurred to finally resolved. All the nearby small, tiny little stars go from being blurred, sometimes almost turned into one. Look at that little segment of three right there. Cleanly resolved triplet of stars. It's amazing. I really am blown away by this thing, and I hope it's coming across on video just how important I think that this tool is going to be to astronomy. I reckon... You know, every now and again, something comes along and changes the game, and this is it. So if I just go back and forth again, the same thing's happening. You can see, even on slightly better sampled data, I'm sorry I'm nearly burping at the camera here. Um, I'm that excited I'm swallowing air. <laughs> but yeah, again, back and forth, you can see the change that this is having. It's unbelievable. So I'll show you now some more different comparisons that I've set up, so I'll just move those off to one side. So start with some M51 data that I took on my 300 PDS. So this was taken with the Player One Apollo M Mini, so actually a solar imaging camera. But it was quite well sampled and it was pretty good data. So on the left here, you can see it's not bad. It is a little bit blurred. But on the right, after one application of Blur Exterminator, all of a sudden it's... It <laughs> I nearly said it's going to make Hubble blush, but you know what I mean? It's... I couldn't have done better in hours, and yet this tool turned it into a one-click drag-and-drop. I hope that this is coming across well for you guys. I, I really am impressed, and I, I say if we zoom in and show you some of these really fine filaments in the, uh, the galaxy that's been consumed by M51 right down here, you can see it's drawn out details from deconvolution in this core, such as this little link of filamentary... Uh, detail that just almost 
you could just barely make it out. And yet it's drawn it to the forefront. Now your eyes drawn to it. It's a feature of the image that otherwise would have been nigh on impossible to pull out. Hats off. This thing is incredible. Let's jump on to another comparison. I'm sure that you can get the idea that I'm excited about this by now, but here's some M106 data, just luminance taken from the Esprit 120 and ASI 183 MM Pro. And as you can see, we're looking at M106 in particular right here for just zoom in a little bit further towards the core of the galaxy. So this is the before, this is the after. I'd just like to point out that again, nothing has been done to these images. They've just been background extracted really quickly hurriedly in fact with ABE to make this uh, video for you guys I really want to get the word out there I'm not trying to show anything that Adam Block hasn't already covered in his video because I'm just not capable of that <laughs> all I want to do is just get my do my part and get this video out there to help spread the word about this fantastic tool because really Russell Chrome deserves all the support he can get for these just mind-blowing <laughs> mind-blowing implementations as you can see, look at the detail in the core of that galaxy now. It's almost like it's not blur exterminator, it's atmosphere be gone. It's like I've sent the Esprit 120 into space to take these images. If we zoom in now on uh, another nearby galaxy in the M106 little group, if you like, and you can see once again, if I just undo and redo, not only are all the stars just beautiful at this point, makes them almost look like narrowband stars and this is just luminous data but the dust lanes through this galaxy and now oh, they put me in my happy place i'm just gonna say that it looks wonderful so let's jump on really quickly to the next one so this is some more one shot color data this was taken through my 12 inch newtonian the 300 pds and a 2600 mc pro camera much like the poseidon i'm using right now and as you can see not bad data actually on the left this has had nothing done to it just cropped and uh background extraction i think but anyway nothing severe and at this point yeah you can see it's not too bad there's some potential to the image but if we just share this view across to the one that's had blur exterminator put on the blur has been exterminated well and truly i mean once again back and forth you can see the difference for yourselves it's undeniable it's taking all these fine details that, that are only just visible to the eye, deconvolving them perfectly and making them really stand out features of your image. And from this point on, I mean, you're not going to have to go far before you've got a really, really pleasing image. I mean, you can see I've got noise exterminator waiting next. You could use Topaz AI if you wish as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's making honestly quite a difficult task of making images really shine becomes so much easier um once again nothing special has been done these are just drag and drop i really want to make that completely clear that i'm not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes i never will do that i just want to help you get the best images that you can so once again as you can see we're looking at the same portion exactly and look at these stars they all of a sudden go from being you know not bad to looking exceptional if you jump down on this image now you can see it's not been properly background extracted but i hope you'll forgive me for the haste in which i've made this video just share the view across once again the base data just been color calibrated and that's with noise exterminator and that's with blur exterminator these fine edge regions of this galaxy part of stefan's quintet all of a sudden boop they pop right out it's phenomenal I'm, I'm so excited so excited going forth for uh, all my new images with this uh, it makes me want to go back and reprocess everything i've done too i thought i'd include this um this is some unreleased data that i actually took last year just in one session with my esprit 120 and no filter on the horse head and flame and i thought i'd include this just to see what it did with a stupendously bright star like alnitak and as you can see no artifacting or anything like that in fact it's just made it beautiful really and especially the filament detail deep inside the uh the core of the flame nebula right there i mean take a look at the difference on that so nice and then one more step let's say if you went noise exterminator or again topaz affiliate links below 
Um, but, but seriously, you know, it, it, two steps and you've gone from having an image that looks pretty rough to most of the way processed. These tools are crazy. I, uh, I really am impressed. And if we just jump onto the last little comparison, once again, one shot color, 250 PDS this time on Melot 15, the core of the Heart Nebula itself. And Blur Exterminator does the business. I I can't say enough good things, guys. This thing is incredible. And, you know, far be it from me being in a position to tell you guys how to spend your money. That's none of my business. But I can more than tell you how I spend mine. And I've spent it on this. And <laughs> I'm seriously glad that I did. Now, I know at the moment, because I used it, if you already own some of Russ Croman's software, you can enter your license key for that and get a I think a $10 discount from the price which I did and I'm very thankful for that opportunity and I'd just like to say guys I mean thanks for your time in watching this if you found this at all intriguing then please do go check out Adam Block's video on this he goes thread through the needle like only he really can and uh, does a great job of explaining everything but as I've said, I just wanted to do my part of getting the word out there for Russell Croman on these tools. I have nothing to do with the man or anything like that. I just I respect him and I really do thank him for his doing. And Adam Block and Bill Blanchard for the astronomy <laughs> community as a whole. I'm tripping over my words because I'm excited. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to say thanks so much to everybody for watching. A very special thank you to my friend Joachim Fjeldli for putting me onto this again. I really do appreciate that he took the time to send a message and say, you really should be checking this out, Luke, because he was damn right. I really should have checked this out, and I did, and I'm thankful to him. So with that, guys, that's about everything from me. I hope you enjoyed. Look after yourselves and clear skies.